Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In this video I'm gonna revisit an old classic games console, the Atari 2600. I made a couple of videos about this console uh, a long time ago, uh, but uh, now I got another one, so I uh, thought it's uh, time to revisit and see what we can do with this one. And here is the Atari 2600 Junior, which uh, is a more modern version than uh, the original that came in that uh, wooden looking cabinet. This is uh, quite uh, much smaller and was produced later, but uh, it has the same functionality as the original. And with it, I have the power supply, a few games, a uh, few joysticks, and uh, two paddles. And, uh, I have tested uh, the console, it does power on and run games, but uh, picture quality is uh, pretty poor because it only has an uh, RF antenna output and uh, the paddle controls work very poorly, so I have to take a look at those. Otherwise uh, the thing is dirty, dirty <laughs> joysticks and needs a good uh, cleaning. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. If you are a creator and need some PCBs, then you should consider PCB Way. If you visit pcbway.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. Besides good quality PCBs, uh, PCB Way also uh, offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, among other services. So head over to PCB Way and check out their services. So I'm gonna start by powering it up and see how it uh, performs. And uh, before I do that, I wanna check out the power supply. It is uh, an original Atari one and it uh, provides uh, nine volts. So uh, always good idea to check the power supply before you power it on. All right, let's check now. Okay, it is uh, 14 volts DC, that's a little bit high, perhaps. Of course, it's not under load now, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure if that is too much or not. Uh, of course, this will get converted to 5 volts uh, inside uh, the console, but uh, maybe I should find another one. And this power supply is probably seen better days it has a loose parts the whole transformer inside is loose anyway i got another power supply i'm gonna test that okay so it's also uh, 15 volts and this i have used uh, several times so uh, i think i'll take my chances and uh, go with the first one then We'll see if anything blows up or uh, starting to smoke. So I'm gonna test this uh, super breakout game. All right, there you go. It seems to be um, working fine. I can see that the paddle or, <laughs> yeah. This one is moving. So as I mentioned when I started, the paddles are uh, very scratchy and uh, yeah, it's almost impossible to to play, as you can see. And you can see the picture quality is pretty poor. There are some disturbance going up and down. Yeah, there's no sound from this game, so I'm not sure if that's a, a fault on the console or the game. I'm going to try another one. Space War. This probably uses a joystick, <laughs> but there's uh, no sound on that one. 
Let me try this one, Missile Command. This chooses um, a joystick. Seems to be a pretty poorly working joystick then. <laughs> But there's no sound, so definitely there's something wrong with the sound on this console. So, that was the status of uh, the Atari and uh, it's time to open it up. See if we can figure out uh, what's uh, wrong with the sound. And uh, at the same time I'm gonna open this power supply because it is obviously loose inside. So I'm gonna start with that. At least I can glue it down inside so it won't move inside. Uh, it seems like uh, it's not possible to uh, open this with no screws, but there's actually some uh, rubber stoppers here that uh, if you use a knife or something pointy, you can pull that out. And that reveals a screw. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the whole thing is loose. Maybe it was glued down before, but uh, now it's loose. So that's quite a simple power supply then. <laughs> so this is probably not a big deal, but I'm gonna add some uh, hot glue to this. All right, I think that's enough. Okay, it's not wobbly anymore. <laughs> Maybe it was like that from the factory, who knows. All right then, let's open this thing and see how it uh, looks inside. Might be that this has been uh, opened before because the warranty label is uh, Lift it off. So how was it again? How do we open this? Okay. Yeah, I remember now there was some trick. Something here in the front. There is a clip. Okay, there's a clip here. You need to push a flat screwdriver or something and bend it to the left side and then it came loose. And there's a little flat flex that goes to the switches here. Pull them gently out. All right, so now I'm in and can remove uh, the PCB plastic clips on the side. Be careful not to break them. Old brittle plastics. So now that the cover is off I'm gonna take them and uh, wash them, clean them real good in some uh, hot uh, dishwashing water. <laughs> and the PCB looks all right. It is quite uh, dirty. A lot of dust. I'm gonna remove this uh, shield. It's just uh, with these metal retainers that you need to uh, yeah, turn. Yeah, definitely someone has been inside here before. Uh, one of the retainers are not through the hole and bent down. Okay, that's off. <laughs> that's it. The PCB is uh, free and all the RF signals can now gather around this PCB and destroy it. <laughs> no, it was actually the other way around. These uh, RF shields are meant for uh, 
protecting other devices from RF noise from this device. <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna clean up the PCB. Quite dirty and uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it out and blow away the dust first. That's a lot better. Lots of uh, isopropanol alcohol. <laughs> so I'm going to try and remove this uh, flat flex so that uh, I can uh, Clean this in the water. They seem to be just clipped in, so uh, probably just uh, push them down. Oops. <laughs> yeah, didn't break. <laughs> right. Now the case goes into its spot. So while I'm at it, I'm cleaning the contacts with some contact cleaner. And the switches, of course. So now everything is uh, very clean and looks nice. I have inspected the, the whole board, both sides. I can't see any obvious uh, things. There isn't any corrosion or anything black or anything that indicates some fault with this PCB. So um, actually I'm gonna hook it up to the TV now and test because uh, many times even cleaning a board can just uh, fix some issues with it. But before I um, hook it up, I'm gonna measure this voltage regulator and see what we got. So it's 12 volts. And there's 5.0, so this uh, seems to be uh, yeah, not over voltage then. And if I find the correct values, I'm gonna replace uh, the electrolyte capacitors. There's just uh, five of them so that should be an easy replacement so let's test now on the tv so the chip that generates the graphics and the sound uh, on this uh, board is the tia chip it stands for television interface adapter and it's this one so it might be that this chip is uh, gone and uh, therefore does not produce any audio so the other two chips here are this is a 6507 chip that is a smaller variant of the 6502, the same chip that is in many microcomputers and uh, games consoles back in the day. And this is the RAM IO timer chip. So uh, audio is produced uh, from this chip on uh, pin 13 and uh, then it goes over to the RF modulator uh, circuitry here and out through the RF out there. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is to measure and see what's coming out on the, the pin 13 on the TIA chip. But before I do that I'm gonna hook it up to the TV and see if there's any change after uh, cleaning it and to get a cartridge uh, <laughs> inserted uh, when you don't have uh, the case around you have to find something here and push it in. There's these uh, stoppers here that uh, prevents uh, the lid from opening. So uh, yeah, do like that. And then you hold those pins in and uh, you can insert it. So yeah, start up. But to see if the sound now is working, we probably have to press <laughs> start button or the select button there. Yeah, I can just insert it and push the button. Oh, <laughs> there's sound. <laughs> 
there is sound. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, so just taking it apart and cleaning it brought back the sound. Let's uh, <laughs> try and, and play now. And the controller or the paddle is still <laughs> not usable. Yeah, there is sound. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> so I was preparing for some uh, troubleshooting here with the oscilloscope, but uh, no need to do that then. <laughs> All right. So what can be the reasons for that it uh, now suddenly start working and producing uh, audio? Well, <laughs> it's hard to tell. It can be that the channel selector was uh, the switch was. Uh, bad or uh, yeah a little bit uh, corroded it can be some pins on the cartridge lot or something like that i'm not really sure it's just uh, me guessing but uh, yeah but there is sound so i know this works while i have the board out i'm gonna recap it and i found the values here it's um, 2200 microfarad at 16 volts and then it's three times 4.7 50 volts and one 4.7 35 volts just for good measure i sometimes uh, check the capacitors to see if the values are correct this should be 4.7 yeah it's uh, 4.65 so that's uh, pretty good yeah, they all checked out fine, so uh, just gonna quickly uh, recap this board. Then in with the new ones. Just need to double check the polarity. the time. That wasn't too hard, was it? It was uh, 10 minutes. So since this board uh, suddenly start working again, one of the reasons might be that uh, some solder joints have cracks or something. So I'm gonna check them now and go over uh, with my solder iron. I can actually see some of the solder joints have uh, in fact holes around them. They have not been filled completely. And if my voice sounds a little bit uh, <laughs> hoarse right now, it's because uh, I just got uh, COVID, so I'm recovering right now. <laughs> touched up and uh, reflowed all the connectors and uh, the switches so hopefully they are uh, more solid now
All right, so now I want to check out these uh, paddle controls. Uh, see if I can, uh, yeah, maybe use some uh, the oxide and uh, make the potentiometers better. It's uh, probably just some, uh, yeah, they are maybe worn or uh, oxidized or something like that. So I can clean them up a bit, see if they work better. Yeah, I want to take out the whole uh, potentiometer here. Escape the real world. So that's the potentiometers, and uh, yeah, you could of course open them by bending back the metal, but uh, hopefully that's not necessary. I'm just gonna spray a good amount of uh, this oxide clean. I'll let it work for a few minutes. And of course the contact. Plastic parts I take uh, down and clean Escape in uh, hot soapy world. water. Now that uh, the oxide has worked for a few minutes I spray once more with uh, this electronic cleaner and uh, oh boy there's a lot of uh, dirt coming out. I think that's it. I'm gonna test now before I assemble them. These are actually just the variable resistors. When you turn them, the resistance change, like in the old uh, radios. Okay, I connected it, and uh, let's see now if this works any better. Oh yes, look at that. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Very nice. And to test the other one, I need to select a two-player game, but uh, I'm hoping that it works as well. So assembling this can be a little bit tricky. It's important that you get both the pot meter and the switch in the correct position and uh, assemble it the same way it was. All right, everything is cleaned and looking nice. Just a little bit of uh, cleaning of this uh, cable. Next up are the joysticks and uh, yeah, one of them is extremely dirty <laughs> and the other one seems to be not working very well. So I can hear a uh, yeah, cracking sound inside. So it's essentially the same procedure as with the paddles, open them up and uh, see if we can uh, fix anything. Four screws underneath. All right, so the switches seems to be all right. They all come down and come up again, so uh, yeah, but this one looks a little bit dodgy. Uh, oh, yeah, it's broken there. So here you see part is broken. This actually looks to be 3D printed, but I'm not really sure. So I think I'm just uh, gonna try and uh, use some super glue on this, but uh, it really looks uh, 3D printed, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, 3D printed plastic is not very hard, so it breaks easily, especially small parts like this. So uh, either I'm gonna glue it or I'm gonna try and print another one, see if I can find this part. And there was a little spring inside, probably came loose from the button. So I'm gonna take off uh, the whole thing and uh, clean up the plastics. 
or that might not be uh, easy to get out <laughs> through the hole. At least I'm gonna clean uh, the top part. And then the other one, let's see if uh, that too has been uh, <laughs> 3D printed. No, that's uh, the original part. And nothing seems to be broken on that one. So this is a much uh, harder plastic. And oh boy, it's dirty in here. <laughs> If we compare, uh, we can see that it's a different uh, PCB layout. This actually have uh, some uh, labeling. Revision 1, this one has nothing. This actually seems like uh, homemade. <laughs> or maybe a cheaper replacement part. But all the switches seem to be alright. Just gonna clean it up a little bit. Now this very dirty top is going to get a good cleaning. <laughs> it is time to assemble uh, the joysticks. Uh, and I'm actually printing uh, this part right now, so I have to wait for that. So, uh, start with this one. The part is now finished. It took about two hours, so now this should fit into here. But this was kind of a special part, so I had to use a lot of support material. And uh, that is some additional material that the printer uses in order to be able to, to print the part that is not <laughs> that does not have a surface underneath it so just need to uh, take off this and uh, yeah then it should be good all right now that's taken care of <laughs> does it fit let's see now yeah that's a perfect fit. So that were the joysticks and I'm not gonna test them right away. I'm gonna wait until I'm finished with the job. When we can play some games finally. All right, so this video got a little bit longer than I planned uh, due to I uh, got down with the COVID. But I'm pretty good now, so uh, <laughs> I didn't get very sick or anything, just a couple of days with uh, fever and uh, yeah, my voice. <laughs> so I was planning to uh, make a composite uh, modification to this Atari, but uh, I actually changed my mind because I ran out of time and I don't have uh, the necessary parts. So uh, I'm gonna assemble the machine now and I'm actually planning to do a separate video about uh, different uh, composite mods for the Atari 2600 uh, later. Maybe do a couple of comparisons between uh, different ways of uh, modding it. So I'm starting to uh, assemble the console and uh, the, this uh, bottom shield has a few rust stains so I'm gonna just um, scrape them off a little bit and then use some uh, WD-40 to protect it. came uh, 
together quite nicely and looking very good but uh, if you can see it's uh, quite scratched on the aluminium here so yeah doesn't look very nice so I was actually thinking maybe I could polish this so I'm gonna try a little <laughs> car polish product here and see if that can remove some of the scratches just use a little bit <laughs> So now I have applied the product and I'm gonna let it dry and then gonna rub it off and polish it with a microfiber cloth. Now that didn't work at all, still the same scratches so I guess this is not the correct product to use in this case. Okay, the console is finished and uh, ready to test some games. Okay, it seems to work just fine now and the paddle is uh, somewhat okay. Still a little bit uh, unstable but uh, quite playable. Let's try something else, a missile command and uh, yeah, this uses a joystick, so I'm gonna test my joysticks. Yeah, this joystick works just fine. That was the good joystick, no this is the one that I uh, replaced the inner part with a 3D print. Yeah, up doesn't work, button doesn't work, <laughs> so that was a bummer. Gonna see if it works if I just uh, press down on the contacts. Yeah. But not uh, left and up. So there's something more wrong with this. So I think I figured it out. It is actually a bad uh, cable here because if I... Yeah, either the contact or the cable is uh, has a bad contact because... Uh, if I just move the cable, then suddenly uh, all directions work. <laughs> and the button, you see now it turns left. Okay, so this probably needs a new cable, which I don't have uh, right now. So I'm gonna fix that sometime later. Space war. <laughs> so the picture quality isn't that bad uh, actually I just fine-tune the TV a little bit and uh, it's quite acceptable let's finish off with some uh, pole position Oh no, 
<laughs> All right, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. There is still more to do with this Atari and uh, the joystick and some composite uh, mod, but uh, that will have to come sometime later. I just want to say thanks for watching and a special thanks to my Patreons. See you, bye bye.